Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Lord Josh here. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone with this video. This is both a Taoist magic lesson and a Romance of the Three Kingdoms lesson. In this episode, I will be discussing the contents of chapter 103, in which the great Prime Minister Zhuge Liang prays to the Northern Dipper in order to extend his lifespan by 12 years, while suffering from a very life-threatening illness. This is a real Taoist ritual that is still practiced to this very day, so let's jump into it. During the Battle of the Wuzhong Plains, the forces of Xu Han, led by Zhuge Liang, and the forces of Cao Wei, led by Sima Yi, were locked in a stalemate. Kong Ming always had a strong reputation for being an extremely loyal and hard worker. He would rise early and go to bed late. During this difficult time, he began to eat less and less, only consuming a few pints of grain daily. He would personally take care of every matter within the kingdom of Shu, whether big or small, he would manage most of the tasks himself. Such commitment and dedication the world had never seen before or since his time. However, it began to take its toll on the Prime Minister, who by this point was getting older and not in the best health. In fact, he was seriously unwell, suffering from a relapse of an old illness that could not be stopped. Kong Ming said, My mind is all in confusion. This is a return of my old illness, and I am doomed. Despite this, he went forth from his tent to take a look at the night sky in order to conduct celestial divination, a reading of the stars. They always hold the answer. Throughout Chinese history, the will of heaven is often secretly coded into the natural world, and only skillful mystics can read its subtle signs. Those who can read the celestial bodies can get access to information that will reveal their fundamental fate and destiny a fate that has been assigned to them from birth. The famous Chinese saying, man proposes, heaven disposes, means that man, humans, may try to take control of their lives and do what they want, but heaven is the ultimate decider that governs their life force. If the will of heaven is against you, you won't be able to achieve your dreams. All human affairs are determined by this heavenly will the end of a dynasty, the end of a person's life, or the end of a global event. Don't get me wrong, there are rituals in place to change or prolong a person's destiny, and they do work, but the success of those rituals always depends on heaven. Boy, have I learned this the hard way. So what did Kong Ming see when he examined the night skies? He returned back to the tent and said to his protege, Xiong Wei, My life may end at any moment. Why do you say such a thing? replied Xiong Wei. Just now, in the triumvirate constellation, the guest star was twice as bright as usual, while the host star was darkened. The supporting stars were also obscure. With such an aspect, I know my fate. Now, Kong Ming knows better than anyone what this all points to. In Chinese spirituality, it is believed that a person's assigned star can be used to calculate their destiny based on the degree of its brightness. This brightness determines the life force and strength of the person it is connected to. When the person dies physically, the star literally disappears and fades away. In my opinion, divination is half of most people's magical practice. Celestial divination involving the stars is the most accurate and powerful of any method. When I go out to do an evening reading, if it's a clear night and you can see everything, the very second that I look up, I instantly go into trance. The stars captivate me and I get lost in them. That's why my altar is called the Altar of the Seven Stars. The stars are my heaven. I love them. After hearing the unfortunate news from Kong Ming, Xiong Wei says to him, If the aspect be as malignant as you say, why not pray in order to avert it? Kong Ming responds, I am in the habit of praying, but I know not the will of God. However, Prepare me forty-nine guards, and let each of them have a black flag, 
dress them in black and place them outside my tent. Then will I from within my tent invoke the seven stars of the north. If my master lamp remain a light for seven days, then is my life to be prolonged for twelve years. If the lamp goes out, then I am to die. Keep all idlers away from the tent, and let a couple of guards bring me what is necessary. So here, Kong Ming is making preparations for the life extension ritual. The Northern Dipper, or Big Dipper, is massively central to all Taoist magic. You cannot truly practice Taoist occultism without the Dippers being involved in some way. It is seen as the center and source of all things. It controls the order of the universe, it governs the seasons, distinguishes good from evil, and controls fortune and disaster. The Northern Dipper is also viewed as a gate or an entrance into the heavens. Ancient Taoist sorcerers believed it was essential that if people wanted to live longer, they would need to pray to the Dipper in order to take their names off of the register of death. The power that the seven stars emit is so great that it can be harnessed on earth and if properly absorbed, it can be channeled for healing. Even the name, the Seven Stars, is slightly misleading because the Northern Dipper actually contains nine stars. The last two are invisible and only become visible to highly skilled magicians who have cultivated their energies to expert levels. These dark stars emit what the Taoists call an anti-light, a black light, or a light that does not shine. Some schools also teach that whilst there are uh, visible solar systems out there that can be seen, there's also an invisible hidden solar system consisting of planets. So every planet and star system has an invisible counterpart to it, including the Northern Dipper. Each star is governed by a divine deity, which can be invoked individually or collectively. The Northern Dipper represents what is known as the Gate of Access. This is a spiritual passage between life and death. When a magician ascends through this gate, he or she will be able to gain knowledge about past, present, and future events. Each star corresponds to a location of the human body, and the left hand of the magician is used to connect with the Northern Dipper. Each of the stars also corresponds with the seven chakras. I'll talk about this in a future video. Certain stars have influence over many different aspects of a person's life. If they are born human or animal, if they are to become rich, die young, stay poor forever, or achieve greatness. The female goddess Du Mu is known as the immortal mother of the Dipper. I'm sure some people will disagree with me here and that's fine, but personally I consider the Northern Dipper to be the most important aspect of magical occult Taoism because it keeps everything in order. I really do believe that's where the true power comes from. Around this time in the story, it was the eighth month, mid-autumn, and the sky was exceptionally clear to the point where every star could be seen. The Milky Way is described as appearing brilliant with stars like diamonds and scattered jade. The air was calm and placid, there wasn't a sound to be heard. Forty-nine strong men, all dressed in black robes carrying black flags, were placed outside of the tent. Black in ancient Taoist practice is considered to be the color of heaven. Inside the tent, Kong Ming prepared incense and offerings. On the floor of the tent, he placed seven lamps, all arranged exactly like the shape and the pattern of the Northern Dipper and the deity's position above. As above, so below is at play here. Outside of the main seven oil lamps, he placed 49 smaller oil lamps, in the middle, he placed his own lamp, which is known as the Master Lamp. The Master Lamp is assigned to the person's fate, and the flame represents their life force. So if the flame of the Master Lamp remains lit for seven days, the person is cured and the ritual is a success. But if it blows out, this is considered to be a terrible omen meaning that the stars have not granted the wish of the magician, and nothing more can be done to change one's fate. This is why the ritual is almost always done by an experienced Taoist priest, or at the very least a wise practitioner. This is not a novice-friendly spell. You are quite literally playing with your life 
if you mess around with this working. That's why I always tell people, if this is your first exposure to Taoist occultism, maybe try something a little easier and less risky. After everything had been placed in its proper area, Kong Ming began his prayer. This is exactly what he prayed. I, Zhuge Liang, born into an age of trouble, would willingly have grown old in retirement. But His Majesty Liu Bei, the glorious emperor, sought him thrice and confided to him the heavy responsibility of guarding his son. He dared not do less than spend himself to the utmost in such a task, and he pledged himself to destroy the rebels. Suddenly the star of his leadership has declined, and his life now nears its close. He has humbly written a declaration on this silk piece to the great unknowable, and now hopes that he will graciously listen and extend the number of his days, that he may prove his gratitude to his prince and be the saviour of the people restore the old state of the empire and establish eternally the Han sacrifices. He dares not make a vain prayer. This is from his heart. Notice how Kong Ming speaks about himself in this prayer. That's how a lot of Taoist prayers are said. So if I wanted to perform a working, I usually say something like, I, Lord Josh Allen, politely request the following deities. Then I'll list the gods that I want to work with, and then I'll say, He, meaning myself, he requests your presence to assist him during this time. I learned this from Kong Ming. I thought, I'm going to try it and see if it makes any difference to my magic, and I can actually say, yes, it does. Certainly with verbal prayers, incantations, mantras, it makes a noticeable difference. Also note the sincerity of the prayer and the respect. Some magicians have the perspective that spirits, gods, angels, demons are nothing more than servants, nothing more than a means to an end. You summon them up or you invoke them and you command the spirits to work on behalf of you. Get me this job. I want this sum of money. I command you to help me make this person fall in love with me. If you practice like that, that's fine. I'm not judging anyone. But you cannot, you cannot treat the seven stars like that. These stars deserve the greatest level of respect and reverence, and you cannot make a false prayer to them. They can read the hearts of mortals, so any attempt to deceive or trick them will backfire terribly. One thing that I also love about Kong Ming's prayer, he addressed the prayer to the great unknowable. Within magic, you will very quickly discover that God the source, the Tao, the void, the supreme being can never ever be truly known or understood completely by the human experience. It is only after we are set free during death that we will return to oneness, and then we discover the true divine. Such divinity is beyond the five senses of the physical body. And if you think you've got it all figured out in flesh and blood, then you're deluding yourself. The Tao that can be spoken of is not the true Tao. There is a massive difference between calling a nature spirit by its name, because that's a localized entity that is here on earth, in comparison to a star deity. That is a cosmic god. It's more mysterious than we can comprehend. They say knowing is half the battle. The rest is knowing what you do not know. Back in the tent, the prayer ended and Kong Ming waited for the morning to arrive. The next day, despite being ill, he did not neglect his duties. Being a true workaholic by nature, he continued on despite spitting blood throughout the day. In fact, just a second, this is such a moving story. And Kong Ming is such an inspiring person. I'm actually going to ask my viewers, all of you watching right now, to light a candle in memory of Kong Ming. Don't practice any spells, just light a simple candle and keep Kong Ming in your thoughts. Please do that now if you would. Thank you. I'm just going to light one myself here. Okay. During the daytime, Kong Ming took care of his plans and at night he performed a Taoist ritual dance known as Pacing the Seven Stars or Star Stepping, sometimes called the Steps of Yu. 
There are many variations of this sacred practice. During the Tang Dynasty and the Song Dynasty, there were over 700 variations of the steps. Each Taoist school has its own steps and they vary greatly, but most Tao practitioners agree that the main purpose of pacing is to ascend from earth up to heaven or the nine heavens in order to practice magic in the heavenly plane. Magicians can visit deities and if they know how, they can bring back the star energy back to earth to hold on to it. It's literally like walking in between the worlds whilst in a deep trance. One would imagine themselves flying across the stars, visiting the celestial gods as you travel from star to star. Some practitioners step at each star and invoke the spirit's name whilst reciting incantations and performing hand seals, otherwise known as magical hand gestures. Star stepping has many different uses. For example, magicians who practice Lei Fa, thunder magic, will use a unique stepping pattern which removes yin breath from the body, allowing the magician to discharge powerful yang energy which creates the sound of thunder. They will also summon the thunder from the direction to which the handle of the dipper points in order to destroy demonic entities. Most weather magicians that I know use pacing to control different aspects of nature for weather magic, summoning wind, calling rain and snow. Pacing the seven stars is one of my favorite techniques for weather mancy. It always works. Sometimes it works too well, so please do be careful if you try it. During this time, Kong Ming's rival Sima Yi of the Wei army remained on the defensive. One night as Sima looked up to the stars, he turned to General Sha Hu Ba saying, A leadership star has just lost position. Surely Zhuge Liang is ill and will die soon. So even the enemy could tell that his time was most likely up. However, during the sixth night of the ritual, his master lamp was still burning brightly and it showed no signs of fading out or becoming weak, a very auspicious sign. Kong Ming began to feel a secret joy within himself, perhaps his fate is not yet sealed and the prayers have been answered. Jiang Wei entered the tent to watch some of the ritual for himself. He saw Kong Ming holding a ceremonial sword, his hair loosened while star stepping and pacing around the smoke-filled tent, the incense gathering everywhere. There Kong Ming was invoking the star deities. It is common for Taoist magicians to untie their long hair when they perform heavenly rituals. Just as everything appeared to have been improving, loud noises were heard outside of the tent. Suddenly, Wei Yan, a prominent Shu general, storms into the tent and accidentally knocks over Kong Ming's master lamp. The lamp falls to the ground and the flame blows out, forever sealing the fate of Zhuge Liang. The lamp of fate had been extinguished. Seeing this, Jiang Wei pulled out his sword to slay the general, but Kong Ming stopped him, saying, Life and death are foreordained. No prayers can alter them. Shortly after this, Zhuge Liang passed away on the Wuzhong Plains in August in the year of 234. It was said that heaven grieved and earth mourned on the night of his death. Even the light of the moon dimmed as Kong Ming's soul returned to heaven. So that is the story and that's the ritual. Thank you for watching this video, I greatly appreciate it. Please do remember to check out my playlist, very extensive playlist on Taoist magic where I cover all forms of ritualistic Taoism and also check out my extensive playlist on Zhuge Liang where I talk about the stories from the novel, Kong Ming's history, his battles, his inventions, my poetry for him. Check them out and enjoy them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.